In 2001, Marathon Media introduced an unconventional team of covert ops with futuristic gadgets, a flawless sense of fashion, and high school level homework? Hey guys, I'm Brendan with Channel Frederator, and today we'll be getting into the dirty deeds behind Whoop agents Sam, Alex, and Clover, who showed the world that females totally kick butt. This is 107 facts about totally spies. Let's get started. <laughs> Totally Spies is a French-Canadian cartoon that premiered in 2001 in the U.S. and in 2002 in France and Canada. It was still airing as late as 2014 in Canada. Co-creator David Michel claims that the inspiration behind Totally Spies can be attributed to one thought. What would happen if we mixed the 1995 teen hit Clueless with the classic James Bond espionage franchise? The creative crew behind the series believed that timing was the biggest determining factor in the show's success. At the time, television was overloaded with boyish cartoons, while young girls were trending in other aspects of pop culture. It just seemed like the perfect time to have a cartoon for young ladies. When the show was first being pitched, studios weren't exactly crazy over the idea, but once the show aired, it was alongside other girl power properties, like the theatrical release of Charlie's Angels, and that boosted their ratings. David Michel created and produced Totally Spies alongside Vincent Chavon de Marseille, who was the general manager of Marathon Media at the time, a French production company. The show went from development to production in less than a year. The pilot episode had a lot less of the Japanese anime look that the show adopted upon its official premiere. This was because the series director Stéphane Barry wanted to blend in more of the anime artistic style. Shortly after the release, the series aired in most of the developed world, which was about 160 territories. The show still airs in most of these countries. The viewership was split 50-50 all over the world. This was the biggest surprise to series creators who assumed their male audience would be very low. There was actually a spin-off show entitled The Amazing Spies that was targeted more towards boy viewers. It featured siblings Tony, Mark, Megan and Lee as Whoop's next generation of agents. Of course, Jerry and the girls still make appearances on the show. Totally Spies originally aired on ABC Family before it was cancelled. It took a while, but the show eventually resurfaced in the US on Cartoon Network in 2003, where it became a great success for the network. The show's success in general came as a surprise. The staff knew what they were doing was good, but they had no idea that Totally Spies would grow the fandom it has today. David Michel is pleasantly surprised that the show managed to stay relevant nearly two decades later. When it comes to choosing their overall favorite episodes of the series, the creative crew differs. Series co-creator David Michel prefers a well-developed story, whereas series director Stefan Berry prefers episodes with the best animation quality. One thing's for certain, the series had it all. There was a sixth season that never aired in the US. It made its global launch back in 2013 on TF1 in France, and was sold to Teletoon in Canada, Nickelodeon for Europe, Asia, and Africa, Disney for France, Cartoon Network for Latin America, and networks in Italy, Malaysia, and the Middle East. In 2009, a Totally Spies feature film was released as a prequel to the series featuring how the girls met. It never received a theatrical release in America, but it was broadcast the next year on television. The storyboard artists and model designers placed many hidden Easter eggs in the show for fans. For instance, in the Green for Envy episode, there's a sign that reads Marathon, and there's a Totally Spies poster hidden in another scene. The girls work for a worldwide spy agency called WHOOP, World Organization of Human Protection. It was founded by their main man, Jerry Lewis. Whoop uses cutting-edge technology to develop their gadgets, and they train their agents to be highly proficient in various forms of martial arts. Most of the agents appear to be adults, but as it turns out, they recruit as young as middle school. In the show, the Whoop headquarters is in downtown Los Angeles by Wilshire Boulevard. The building itself is in the shape of a giant W. You know, to be secret and clandestine as possible. The art design is inspired by the 60s and 70s flower power era, including everything from character fashion to interior-exterior decor. But the world also contains current trends and future futuristic tech as well. Though it's never officially stated, this really seems like it could be an ode to the James Bond and Charlie's Angels franchises from which the series obviously drew some inspiration. The character design and dynamic among Sam, Clover, and Alex is often compared to that of the Powerpuff Girls. You can see why. There's the clever leader, the tomboy, and the girly girl. And if that wasn't enough, on occasion the spies can be spotted wearing the same color palettes as the PPG. Speaking of the PPG, veteran voice actor Jennifer Hale lent her talents to the role of Sam, the leader of the spies. Jennifer also does the voice of Miss Keen and Princess Morbox for the current Powerpuff Girls series. The girls attend Beverly Hills High School, an iconic school featured in countless films and television shows. We've seen many Many fictional students attend throughout the years, including Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the cast of 90210, and the leading lady from Clueless, Cher. Despite being the clueless one, Alex reveals she has the things for the intellectual science types as early as season one. We see her pine over a hunky student in episode
episode 3, she flirts with the scientist just an episode later, and we see her hit on a computer programmer in the Game Girls episode. Clover is totally boy crazy. She doesn't have a specific taste in guys, she just likes hunks. On occasion, she's been known to drop a few racy pickup lines, like asking a studly farmer if he'd like his corn inspected. Whoa there. Sam is the leader of the group. She's also the most mature and intellectual friend of the bunch, which is how she managed to maintain straight A's throughout all of high school. Sam certainly has a type when it comes to her taste in men. Ironically, she falls for bad boys, which are the polar opposite of her leading lady mentality. It's also worth noting that she tends to go for tan guys with brown hair and green eyes. She's got a real specific type. Their guardian and mentor is named Jerry Lewis. He's been with Whoop for over 35 years. His name is an ode to the very famous comedian during the 40s, Jerry Lewis. Despite being American, comedian Jerry Lewis is very, very popular amongst the French. The girls never completed a mission without wearing their designer heels. Sometimes the heels were as high as six inches tall. That's uh, pretty impressive by any standards. Clover has achieved the title of queen on three separate occasions. Once when she was named homecoming queen, another time when she posed for an actual queen in the Middle East, and the third time when she was almost dubbed an actual queen again, when a king fell for her during a time travel expedition to the Middle Ages. All of the girls apparently run track, as they've been seen arriving late for their track meet in season one. It's unclear if this continues throughout high school or not, because they apparently attend a slew of after school activities. Also like, you know, all the spy stuff. Aside from their iconic cat suits and swimsuits, the girls are constantly changing outfits for every episode. Sometimes two or three times an episode. Since fashion is pretty important to most tweens, Marathon Media teamed up with French fashion agency Promo Steel to design roughly 1,200 different animated outfits for the three main girls in Totally Spies. The girls actually grow and mature during the series, even graduating from Beverly Hills High and attending Malibu University. During the entire series, from the movie to the sixth season, we witness the girls age from as young as 15 all the way up to their early 20s. How time flies! The theme song Here We Go was originally a pop song by artist Moonbaby in 2000. It was covered twice, once by Lenny Meestrom of the group Aqua in 2003, and once again by Girls Aloud in 2004. The lyrics were rewritten a bit for Totally Spies. Season 3 featured a new intro to the show. The music stayed the same, but they removed the lyrics and just kept the score. Also, the length was shortened and cool new effects were added, like the nifty 3D models of the girls. However, the intro was completely redone for the sixth season. The compounder ringtone that was used to introduce the theme song for Season 3 is very reminiscent of Kim Possible's famous intro, which we all know is Disney's very own espionage show based on a young high schooler's double life as a covert spy. Kim's show released a year after Totally Spies, but her ringtone is still famous to this day. There's a knockoff Macy's department store that can be spotted during exterior shots of the Beverly Hills Mall. It's called Casey's, and we can't help but wonder if this means there's a Casey's Thanksgiving Day Parade as well. Muffins are a usual go-to breakfast item for the girls, and each girl has their own personal favorite muffin. Samantha's a chocolate chip girl, Clover likes poppy seed, and Alex is the weirdo that just prefers bran. Ugh. In season two, there's a totally hunky guy that catches the eyes of all three girls. His name is David, and he's named after co-creator David Michelle. Many of the villains introduced in the series managed to return for the following seasons. This is a common element within the espionage genre, but more so the writers just love bringing back villains when the audience would least expect it. According to the episode Spies in Space, Sam has the highest record of straight A's in the entire history of Beverly Hills High. Of course, she lost valedictorian to Arnold upon graduation. Nerdy Arnold has managed to coax two of the three girls into dating him. Once he bribed Clover, saying that he would run her homecoming queen campaign in exchange for exclusive relationship rights for one day, and another time he lured Sam into a dinner date under false pretenses by claiming he was her secret admirer. Ironically, Arnold never went on a date with Alex, but considering her previous love interests, seems like a pretty good match. As it turns out, Jerry is a golfer. We see him working on his game during retirement in the second episode of the first season. Although the video turns out to be a ruse planted by Tim Scam, the fact remains the same. Alex confessed that her favorite band is Ultra Loud Zone in the first season, while Clover reveals hers is something called the Smoochie Platypus Band, and apparently Sam likes rap because she loans her MC Diaper Rash CD to Britney. It wouldn't be high school without rivals, and each girl has their own rival. Clover has Mandy, Alex has Caitlyn, and Sam's rival is Dominique. All three girls are weirdly passionate about rollerblading. They're seen blading at the beach and even through the mall on several separate occasions. During the entire series, the girls' families remain mostly unseen and out of focus. However, we are introduced to their mothers in the episode Totally Busted. Their names are Carmen, Alex's mom, 
Gabriella, Sam's mom, and Stella, Clover's mom. Of the spies, Alex is the only one we see with a pet. It's an unconventional one, too. Her pet is Oinky, the pig. Of course, he doesn't come into the picture until the 2009 movie, but then he becomes a recurring character for the final season. Alex also had a puppy for an episode in season four. In season one, episode two, Sam refers to Tim Scam as being so money. This was a phrase made popular in the 1996 film Swingers, starring John Favreau and Vince Vaughn. A Ricky Martin parody character appears in the very first episode called A Thing for Musicians. His name is Ricky Mathis, and aside from his name and looks, his music also sounds exactly like Ricky Martin's, if you pay close attention to the brief moment they listen to his song. Because girl pop bands such as the Spice Girls helped partially serve as an inspiration for the show, the girls go undercover as a band in the very first episode. Get this, their band name was The Spies. How creative, Jerry. It's a bit of a tradition, but almost every time the girls hit the mall, they also get coffee. What's their drink of choice? Non-fat lattes, of course. Apparently, Jerry can video chat with the girls at any place, any time. This includes randomly appearing at school, in arcade games, and even in dressing room mirrors. Really creepy, Jerry. The girls can also be whooped into headquarters at any place, any time. They could be at their lockers, at the mall, or even just relaxing in a hot tub, and somehow there's an underground tunnel linked to the headquarters. Uh, try not to overthink it. We've all heard of private Jerry but what about covert travel through missiles? That's right, these girls have been transported to a few destinations via missile launch. When it comes to fantasy destinations, Hawaii is Alex's dream getaway. Although she isn't into hula dancing, she's into a little Tongan dance called Tawalunga. Laura Croft of the Tomb Raider gaming franchise actually guest starred in a three-part episode, Evil Promotion Much, as a holographic trainer for the girls. Who better to get them trained than a fellow butt-kicking lady agent? She may be completely boy crazy, but Clover goes on a brief dating hiatus in season two, during which time she manages to solve a huge dating conspiracy. Go Clover! However, we do emphasize the word brief, as the hiatus only lasts, uh, that episode. It's revealed early on in the series that Clover always wanted to be a paparazzi. Ironically, her photographs are what made Whoop so interested in recruiting her as an agent. Apparently, she used to take pictures of boys she liked, all covert style. Seems that Clover might have a creepy side underneath that pretty mask of hers. Jerry keeps a secret teddy bear tucked away under his desk. On occasion, we see him take it out and cuddle the thing when no one's looking. Like, it's cute, but it's also a little creepy. There's an unspoken thing between villain Tim Scam and Sam. It's subtle, constantly implied by her friends, but she's definitely head over heels for the guy. Tim subtly appears to have a thing for Sam as well. After all, the two have an awful lot in common, and in the episode Morphing is so 1987, he actually makes an evil clone of Sam to fight by his side. A ton of thought went into Tim Scam's name. It's more than just his alias Max Smith backwards. The name Tim means honor of God, which is completely ironic for a villain, but could be a reference to the fact that he feels superior to others. Tim's last name, Scam, isn't exactly subtle when it comes to meaning. He was scammed out of the honor he wanted from Whoop, and now he's scamming them back at every opportunity. A con artist by the name of Scam isn't the most discreet. In regards to the Sam Scam connection, the name Samantha also means God's listener, which could explain why she has a soft spot for God's honor. Also, it's worth noting that their names are only one letter apart, with Sam just missing the C to turn into Scam. Brittany is a fellow spy introduced to the series in season two during the episode Alex Quits, and she's the only real friend the girls have outside the trio. But while the other girls adore Brittany, her relationship with Alex is more on a frenemy basis until season five, where it's revealed that Brittany sees her as a role model. The girls become roommates for season three, where we see them bicker over funny little personal habits, like the fact that Sam sings in the shower, Alex doesn't do laundry often, and Clover borrows her friend's clothes without asking. The show is inconsistent about their height, but officially Alex is the shortest. Although that's been contradicted before in episodes like Escape from Moop Island and Ho 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 Ho. Alex is often seen as the most immature of the group, but ironically, she's the best with kids. This is shown in the season three Halloween episode where the girls are forced to babysit. Maybe they relate to her immaturity. Alex is huge into sports. She's mentioned kicking butt at co-ed baseball and soccer. Plus her dream dates include surfing in Hawaii, though she isn't very good at it, and attending martial arts class with a studly partner. On a few separate occasions, Clover has expressed her dislike for soccer, unless it's co-ed soccer, of course. But even in that case, her motives are definitely not sport related. Sam prides herself on being the clean organized one while her friends are described as the messy roommates. Ironically, it's revealed that Sam's room is often the messiest of all of them. The girls have three older counterparts, their Whoop predecessors that served as the core team before them. The women were presumed dead after they had been captured by an eco-terrorist by the name of Edison and went missing for seven years. The counterparts and former team members were Alice, who was replaced by Alex, Pam, who was replaced by Clover, and Crimson, who was replaced by Sam. Their respective catsuit colors were purple, crimson, and blue. Ironically, Crimson didn't wear the crimson catsuit. It's no secret that Clover's the dancer in the group, having boasted about it on several occasions, but Sam once revealed that she tried her hand at it too. She took up clogging. That's folk dancing. Alex wasn't very popular when she started high school. 
When she was a freshman, the seniors used to stuff her behind the soda machine. Sam can't flirt to save her life. Guys have even left during her pickup attempts, like in the episode The Dusk of Dawn when the theater usher turned her down. If guys ever do stick around, it's still a painfully awkward encounter. Chemistry is by far Alex's worst subject in school. She's seen messing up in class a few times, and in the episode Alex quits, it's revealed that she has to complete an extra credit assignment just to pass the class, and just barely. As a part of Operation Secret Partnership, Sam posed as a mime under the identity Miss Spirit Fingers. As a result, mime-based villain Jazz Hands fell in love with Sam and attempted to make her his queen. Yep, his mime queen. Sam used to wear braces in the sixth grade. She also had her first kiss around that same time with a boy named Lloyd Bradley. Their braces got stuck together. It goes without saying that Clover is totally the shopaholic of the bunch. The girl has an entire closet dedicated to just handbags. The other girls had no idea she had so many bags until Clover talked about reorganizing her handbag closet. Out of the three, Clover has the most expensive taste. Even when it comes to candy, she prefers imported Belgian chocolates with hazelnut ganache. Her least favorite candy is candy corn. You can hear Exorcist parody music playing in the background of the Halloween season three episode when the girls arrive at their destination house for babysitting. Mandy even shows up dressed as the priest in the film with the long trench coat and the hat. Teenage rival Mandy apparently dabbles in witchcraft. She willingly uses a book of dark magic spells to raise the dead and ruin Halloween night for the spies. Although she didn't technically believe the dark spell magic would work, uh, they did. Clover loves cheerleading, but we don't really see this as much as it's mentioned. She's apparently pretty good at it too, because she even won the cheerleader of the year award at Beverly Hills High. On the flip side, Sam absolutely hates cheerleading. Their tastes and cuisine tend to lean towards Asian and seafood, but to varying degrees. While Alex loves Chinese food, wontons especially, Sam enjoys a more Japanese creamed calamari type of dish. Clover, on the other hand, claims to be vegetarian with the exception of seafood. Sam and all the women on her mother's side of the family are descendants of the sisterhood. This was an ancient guild of warriors that wanted to be superior to all men. Jerry has an iced tea wrapper costume, and he calls himself Ice J when he wears it. He also yells at the ladies for stanking up his street cred. Yeah, that, uh, that actually happened. Clover has an older sibling that was never revealed. In the episode Zero to Hero, she states that she also has a nephew who is also unnamed. For anyone who might be interested, Clover's phone number is 818-3877. She wrote it on Blaine's chest when she met him at the beach nearby Malibu University. Alex is a horror movie fanatic, but they tend to scare her easily. Though she claims the contrary, it's easy to tell that she's scared by how jumpy she gets. When it comes to fashion design, Clover's your girl. She designed the girl's cat suits and aced her fashion class midterm assignment. It's also the number one thing she talks about, so like, you know. All the girls are well versed in valley speak, but Clover is also versed in surf lingo since she took up classes, and Alex speaks Spanish. Ironically, none of the girls speak French fluently. Sam is the musician of the group. She won six gold ribbons for playing the accordion. That's right, the accordion. Bet you never saw that one coming. Clover gets kidnapped most out of the three girls. Jerry once referred to a kidnapping incident involving Clover as the second time it's happened that month. In the first season episode titled Game Girls, if you look closely, you'll see that the Jet Rocket device is misspelled, and instead reads Jet Roquette device on the screen. In season three, Alex's voice changed. This is because the voice actress was changed from Katie Lee to Katie Griffin, who is famous for the English dub voice of Sailor Mars in the hit anime series, Sailor Moon. Alex is the only spy that's seen in a different colored cat suit. In the episode Game Girls, Alex wears a silver suit rather than her iconic yellow one, but this was a result of the plot and not like her general fashion sense. As a lover of all things athletic, Alex surprised viewers with her skateboarding skills. She can tackle a half pipe and hiking boots. That's no easy feat as any skateboarder will tell you. The girls eventually meet their alien counterparts in season one, episode 14. The girls team up with these little green dudes who are an alien elite team of spies on their planet. They have a guardian too, by the name of Jay Ree. As an ode to the show's country of origin, when the girls make contact with the intelligent alien life forms, they're blown away by their ability to speak English. In response, the aliens claim they speak way better French. Out of all the girls, Alex had the hardest time learning how to drive. While the other girls already have their licenses, Alex didn't receive hers until episode 14 of the first season. Although Clover already has her driver's license, she's a bit of a reckless driver. According to her, every time she goes out for a ride, she comes home with a ticket. She also can't drive stick, like at all. There's a crossover episode with another marathon produced show, Martin Mystery. Martin makes an appearance in Totally Spies for the episode Totally Mystery Much, and Alex develops a little crush on him. Totally Mystery Much was Martin's official appearance in the show, but technically it wasn't his first. In the episode, 
episode Super Agent much, Martin cameos alongside his sister Diana as a couple of students. This is more of an easter egg for fans, as Martin wasn't wearing his trademark jacket. Initially, Martin has a thing for Clover, but she completely snubs his advances. By the end of the episode, Clover develops a thing for Martin, but at that point, he's already lost interest. That wouldn't have been the first time a guy came between the girls, as Sam actually dated Clover's ex-boyfriend, Fernando, at one point during the series. Clover had some pretty sore feelings about it, too, and so Sam decided to call it off for the sake of the friendship. Of course, then Alex agrees to go on a study date with Fernando, and both Sam and Clover get upset. So it's like a love square? To promote the sixth season, Totally Spies had become more interactive than ever. Along with their newly established social media platforms and a one-hour TV special, a huge interactive treasure hunt took place in the gardens of Versailles, France. A Totally Spies video game was released back in November of 2005. It was developed by Mystic Software, published by Atari, and released on the Game Boy Advance, Wii, and Atari platforms. Once again, I'm Brendan, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About Totally Spies. Spies. Who's your favorite spy? Which mission of theirs was your favorite? Comment below and let us know. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. We got new videos dropping every day, so make sure to subscribe and get all the latest content. And remember, Frederator loves you.